Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the Market Site Studio in Times Square, New York City, we have Marshall Gordon, Senior Research Analyst for Healthcare at ClearBridge Investments. We're going to discuss new treatments for chronic conditions and investment opportunities as it relates to diabetes and obesity. Marshall, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Thanks for having me. And certainly a very hot topic within your space. And a newer class of GLP-1 drugs have recently proved successful in treating diabetes. Can you tell us how they work and what has made them effective? So these drugs do two things. Um, first, they tell your body to release insulin, which will lower your blood sugar, and that's why they're effective diabetes drugs. And the second reason that they work in terms of weight loss is that they're actually the off signal for hunger. And so your body uh, is told by these drugs to basically stop eating. Um, and so you intake less calories and lose weight. Tell us about the potential for an even bigger market for these treatments to manage obesity? So there are about 4 million people in the U.S. on these drugs today, and it's primarily for diabetes. Um, if you look at the total population, there could be as many as 20, 25 million people with diabetes who would benefit from these drugs. Beyond that, there are another 20 million people who are uh, BMI over 40, which are very obese people, um, who I think could benefit from it before they potentially become diabetics, as well as maybe two to three times that number who are overweight and obese, but not quite as large. Who are the major players in the GLP-1 market and how are they positioned moving forward? The two largest players today are Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly. And, it's, uh, and Novo Nordisk is slightly larger today. They both have leading share of these GLP-1 medications. Um, and they have a number of generations of drugs uh, in their pipelines to make them better. So right now they provide weight loss of 15, maybe high teens percentage, and we're going to be pushing to 20 and maybe even 25. And those two companies are in the lead in developing those as well. What about oral treatments? Could they be a viable alternative to the infusions? So there are a number of companies that are working on those. Um, the two in the lead today are Eli Lilly, taking the knowledge that they have from the injectables um, and moving that into oral medications. And Pfizer also has one um, that I think is, is a pretty good candidate. And those are, those are actually, they're looking pretty promising. I think we need to see whether or not they're going to be as safe as the injectable medications and need to see them in more patients. But right now, those are probably the two most promising. The healthcare system in the U.S. is incredibly complex. Um, we know drug companies make money off of treating heart disease, diabetes, and other disease associated with obesity. How do you think the industry will digest this? I mean, these are sources of revenue for them. If, if we get obesity under control, some of those other sources, while a, a good thing for healthcare, as consumers of healthcare, they're going to lose revenue at some point. Well, first of all, I think that these medicines have a, a very large market opportunity. Um, th it's a $30 billion market today for GLP-1s, and that could be $100 billion. And I know that sounds crazy, but it, it's realistic to think that it could be that large by the end of the 2020s. Now, you're absolutely right. Um, I think the key is we need tri clinical trials to show that these medicines prevent other downstream um, heart attacks, strokes, uh, other complications of, of being overweight, and I think that the, the systems will adjust in order to make room to pay for these medications, and that over time there will be cost savings on the back end um, that we can use to fund other initiatives. All right, Marshall, we appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. Thank you for having me. You got it, and thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.